since I told everyone we would. Okay, so um, the next thing we're gonna talk about is logging in. So we're gonna talk about our county computers and then we'll talk about what it might be like at home or if you were someplace else. So your county login is your Windows login. Um, for me, it's two letters and a set of numbers. I know it gets confusing because we talk about your county email and we talk about your county login and we talk about your DD email and all these different things. Um, but you're typically, it's like a series of numbers and letters. And then that's that password that you reset every, I think it's 90 days right now. Um, but logging in anytime, anywhere, you're still gonna, that's like your password to get into your computer. So on my personal computer, I don't have a login like that. It just goes. On my phone, I have a password, not a login. So different computers are gonna use different ways. Um, and I know it's weird because you think about, well, I used that login when I was at my desk, but do I use it at home because I'm not at my desk anymore? It's still the password to get onto your computer. And so it, it's what's gonna open that computer for you. Now we have a few computers that have like a community login that doesn't load everything. So the cool thing about the login is that it's going out and it's figuring out everything that you had set up and associated with your name and adding that to your account. But a community login is not going to do that. So we have um, some generic ones in conference rooms. So like at Pickerington and at Forest Rose and at Admin, there are logins that you're going to use that's, I think it's Fairfield Guest. It doesn't go out and grab everything that's unique to me. It's only going to go out and grab just what it needs to get started. Mm -hmm. And so that time, then you, it does log in faster. So if you remember, sometimes the conference rooms would take forever to load if you logged in with your information. This makes it a lot easier because it's not gonna go out and grab all of that. It's just gonna get things running. But keep in mind, if you log in on a different computer, everybody's monitor's a little bit different shaped or a little bit different sized or the perspective is set up differently. So it might look a little bit different. If you logged in on a computer that was running a different um, version of Windows, which we'll get to later, it's going to look a lot different. It's still going to have everything there, though. So I just caution you, if you get on there and it doesn't look the same, don't freak out quite yet. Because everything's going to be there. We just might have to navigate someplace different to find it. Am I forgetting anything there, Ray? Um, <clears throat> no. <laughs> Other than the fact that... This does get confusing, especially with, you know, the more devices we have, the more confusing it gets. Yes. So, you know, trying to keep that straight, that's, that's an important thing. I have a question, Anne. Yeah. How come we have two login, like the .gov, Ohio, Fairfield County, and then we have the other one that's DD? So, basically... I we have two email addresses. Right. Right, right. And that's what those two are. If we worked for juvenile court at the county level, they would they don't even have a separate one. They just are the Fairfield County Ohio.gov. So we should get all our emails in the Fairfield DD one. I'm 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 gonna modify your answer there a little bit. Um, okay, and, go. Go for it. Okay. So so your actual email address is the fairfieldcountyohio.gov address. That's in, in, uh, to the rest of the world, that is the official address. Then there are other addresses called aliases that are routed to go back to that original address. So like mine, mine is, you know, rschmidt at fairfielddd.com. That's what I give to everybody to send email to me. And when the servers see that email, they know that that goes to Raymond Schmidt at FairfieldCountyOhio.gov. Um, so it's just a, it's just an alias. It's like a nickname if you if you want to think about it that way. And and to be truthful, each one of us has about I, I, I want to say we it's have like 10, ten or twelve. Or yeah, we have like ten or twelve different aliases. Those are just the two different ones that we, that we look at, but we try to grab it for any anything that might happen. So like, there's also. Uh, um, R. Schmidt at mrdd.com, you know, and R. Schmidt at pretty much any any uh, address that we've had before. We try to keep those so we don't lose those email. 
Okay. So, so, so many addresses. Will come to me under the Fairfield DD. I think they should. Yeah. Um, yeah. We we like to stick with the Fairfield DD account because it it helps identify our mm -hmm. agency as being okay. specific. You know, different from the the county. So, yep, that's that's the way to do it. Gotcha. Thank you. Why are so many addresses? Why is there so many addresses? Why um, is there part, so many addresses? Yeah, part of it's legacy, right? Because we've we've had email addresses now for you know well over a decade, and and so you know we didn't always have the FairfieldDD.com. Before that, it was other things. You know, we had MRDD.com for a while. We had um, um, just a, a bunch of different. Um, addresses that have been valid at one time or another and and so we've just uh, kept those so we don't so if somebody has one of our email addresses from before they don't lose them periodically we go through and clean that up and and I think we've been on Fairfield DD long enough that eventually we'll get down to just those two just the main address and the alias and I think we'll, we'll, we'll be okay the nice thing about Microsoft and Outlook, though, is if you log into your Outlook account, because those aliases are built into our user preferences from the IT side, if somebody sends an email to my .gov email or they send an email to my DD email, it's all going to come to me. So for me as the recipient, it I can see it both ways. I don't have to worry about checking like two different accounts or two different places yeah. it merged it all into one mailbox yep perfect but that's going to be different so when we talk about our gov or our dd emails that login is different than the logging into your computer so the computer login you know i can log into a computer and not associate it with my email if i'm on somebody else's device or if I forgot my laptop a day and I borrowed a spare one I can log in there and it'll get me into my desktop so I can get to Word I can get to Outlook I can get to all those things but that's going to be different you know it's a different prefix than my and.mike and at fairfielddd.com but it's going to that's where that um, you know your email login versus your computer login are going to be two different things Hang on, my computer went to sleep. Okay, so parts of a computer. This is desktop. I kind of, it's just a really quick video and I'm, I wanna go ahead and share it because it shows you kind of the insides of the computer, which none of us really have to worry about. Um, but I think Ned's on the call. He probably, and, and Ray probably both at their, some point in their life have um, rebuilt a computer or played with the insides of a computer. It's not something I have ever done, but I'm a science nerd and I think it's kind of cool to see. So I'm gonna show this really quick for everybody. A desktop computer is made up of several basic parts, and in this video we're going to show you what these parts are and what they're used for. The computer case contains the main components of the computer. This is where the actual processing happens. Today, most cases are tower cases, which means they stand up vertically. Sometimes you may see a horizontal case, which is often called a desktop case. In order to view anything on your computer, you'll need to have a monitor. The monitor connects to the video card inside your computer to display images and text on the screen. Most monitors have LCD or LED displays, which can be made very thin so they don't use much desk space. To save even more space, you can buy an all-in-one computer, which combines the monitor and the computer case into a single unit. To interact with your computer, you'll need a keyboard and mouse. Keyboards come in different shapes and sizes, for example, ergonomic and wireless keyboards. 
The mouse is used to control the mouse pointer on the screen. It can either be optical, which has an electrical eye on the bottom, or mechanical, which uses a rolling ball to detect movement. Some people prefer to use a trackball or touchpad instead of a mouse. These use less desk space since they don't need to move around when you're using them. So those are the basic parts of a desktop computer. As you can see, each part plays an important role, and you'll become very familiar with these parts as you gain more experience with your computer. Okay. I know a lot of us don't have um, desktops anymore. You know, I'm sitting here at a laptop, but hopefully through that video, you could see, you know, we have the same things. I was on a call yesterday with one of our directors and I said, can you move the mouse over, over my name? We were in a Zoom meeting and she said, I don't have a mouse. Well, on a laptop, we have a touchpad, but you're still gonna use that touchpad just like a mouse. Um, in some laptops, there's a little button in the middle of the computer that can work like a mouse. Personally, I was never coordinated enough to do that but some people can. On some devices, it's a touch screen, so they don't even have to use a mouse. They can just touch the screen and it works like the mouse. But people are still gonna refer to it as a mouse pointer, just kind of as a legacy thing, because in a lot of times you are still using a mouse. Personally, I like to have a mouse at my laptop anyway, because the touchpad I'm just not as coordinated on. My husband, when he uses it, oh my gosh, he never uses a mouse because he's like spinning around everywhere. He'll have like 13 windows open at one time. But so we all kind of just find our own groove. Some people like wireless mouses, mice, wireless mice, because they aren't, um, you know, it's less cords. My, you know, some people prefer to have that wired mouse because it's just they're used to it. Um, if you're a Mac user, Mac defaults to only one mouse tab, you know, where it, on a Windows computer, you right click and left click. I have a Mac for my personal computer and I had to turn it back on so it was like Windows because I could not function with only one. I couldn't learn all those different things. But so every computer you sit down at, you know, it might be slightly different, but it's gonna have those similar characteristics. It's gonna have some way to show you the screen, some kind of monitor, some kind of touchpad, some kind of processor, but where it's located may vary. Ray, anything we should add? Any questions? Um, I just want to know how's how's everybody responding? Are you guys is this too much information? Just right? Keep going the way we are. You might have Keep to unmute yourself. Good. That's good. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Good. All right. And if you think of questions that you don't want to interrupt, jump in or throw it in the chat box, but feel free to interrupt. I mean, this is meant to be a conversation. I told Ray I was super nervous about doing this one because I want to make sure that it's what people need and want. <laughs> so the next thing we're going to look at is the ports on a computer and these are the scary things because there are like a thousand of them and we never quite know which ones we're supposed to use and people start talking to me about all these um, windows and all this stuff and so we just kind of want to walk you through some of these. Um, I'm going to show you some older school ones. If you buy a new laptop, it might not have all of these because as technology changes, we're trying to get things thinner. And so they've been taking out things that take up a lot of room to make it be thinner. So for example, on the front of a computer, and actually on my laptop, I am just looking, I don't have a CD um, drive anymore or DVD drive, um, but it's there. That would be a way, you know, back, probably 10 years ago, we used CDs and DVDs as writable or rewritable. You know, um, I remember in high school burning CDs of my illegally downloaded music, um, don't tell the federal government, because I wanted to make mixtapes. You know, it was a generation of um, the mix. 
So that drive has gone away in most cases. Um, and so now we have, <laughs> because we still have people using DVDs sometimes, you can get an external one and we actually have a couple. So if you needed to, um, Ned's telling me it's, uh, they were trying to cut the cost and make more space because we want batteries to last longer and so they had to make space so they take that DVD out sometimes. Um, but most desktop computers, if you have a tower, it usually still has it because obviously they have a little bit more room for space. Um, here, the power button is just that little itty bitty button on the front. And so you kind of just have to press and push and oh, that one worked and that's okay. Um, audio. So a lot of times we're using wireless audio, but if you were gonna use wired, so if you were gonna plug in some speakers or you were gonna plug in a microphone um, or a headset, I still use my headphones that you plug into things. That speaker button, and usually most of the time, and I'm gonna see if I can zoom in here a little bit so you can see it. Um, but most of the time there is a little itty bitty headphone that is next to that jack that would go in for a headphone. So if you're plugging that in, and then there's an itty bitty little mic that's next to the jack that's for the microphone. If you're talking to somebody in technology, they might talk about the male and female parts um, or a male plug. Um, the, if you think about when you go to plug in, you're going to have the female part going into the hole and that would be the male part. Um, but so if you're looking at trying to match cables, they might say, well, it, somebody in IT might go, well, is it male to male? And you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. If you think about um, anatomy, that will help you remember if it's male or female. The next couple down here are USB ports. So universal series serial. Um, no one ever calls it by its full name. It's always a USB. And now we've gone to like, there's all different kinds of even USB ports. I don't even, I can't keep up with them. I would have to ask Ray or Ned to be like, wait, what kind of port do I need? <laughs> um, but typically that's where, you know, like the a flash drive or the wireless device for my mouse, things like that are gonna go in a USB port. Yeah, just to, to add to that a little bit. So yeah, so you do have USB like this. Some of you have a phone with a USB-C connector on it. That's like a little rounded connector. The, the big deal that you have to understand about USB is that when we went to that a uh, while ago now, um, USB has the ability to tell a computer what it is when you plug it in. And so for many, many devices, when you plug in something like a flash drive, like um, you know a keyboard or a mouse or anything else you're gonna plug in, um, the the computer will likely know what the device is and automatically load up the software it needs to run that device. That's the real saving grace of USB ports. Uh, before that, we had to define all that. So, so it, it's just, um, you know, that's, that's uh, uh, something that's been a relatively uh, recent development. So the new thing that they're going to, um, if you think about, um, a wireless mouse, for example. I'll use my wireless mouse as an example. I have to plug the little wireless adapter into my computer, and then I have to have batteries in my mouse. Um, a USB-C, that's a new kind of cord, it's actually going to allow you to transfer the information and electricity. So it's a USB like charging. Um, that's kind of the future that they're going to. So as we get new devices in the next couple of years, like if we're on the upgrade list from the county, we'll expect to see some different kinds of USB ports just because as we, um, you know, as they kind of evolve. Um, James is asking, do we think USBs will fade away because of HDMI? Ned and Ray, that is above my pay grade. Do you have a thought on that? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. So HDMI is, is, a, uh, is a video standard, kind of an interesting one. Um, so most of our TV sets run on HDMI cables. 
a lot of our computers have the ability to run on HDMI too. And, and uh, what's cool about HDMI is that it transmits both the video signal and the sound signal at one time. So kind of nice. Um, HDMI also has different standards and they're, they're evolving their standards as well as TVs get bigger and better and, and all that good stuff. Um, but I think they're distinctly different from USB ports in that uh, um, USBs are, are a little more, um, um, they, they, they handle a much greater variety of, of peripheral equipment coming in. So, um, so for instance, I've never seen a, a printer with an HDMI cable, but they will all have a USB um, attachment. Uh, it's just it's just one of those things where that's that's been really the standard. I think what you will see, um, and and we've seen it so far in things like the new USB-C port, but also things like the Lightning port from Apple, um, uh, some some other ports that are coming out. They're they're starting to become more and more transparent to the user, so that you just um, snap something in, plug it in, and it just works. And that's definitely where, where we're going to. But, you know, these things change all the time. So, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. I, I just bought a little machine, and it doesn't have anything except for two USB-C ports, nothing else. So, yeah, it's kind of, kind of wild. So if you think about it, before all of this technology, you know, for a while with computers, and that's kind of what we're going to see on the screen here, is that you had to have a separate cord for everything. And all we've been doing in the last five or so years is combining those cords so that you don't need so many. So, you know, if I look at the back of my laptop today compared to this desktop that we're seeing on the screen, my charging cord, you know, this is the plug where it, actually the power came from the wall to plug in the computer or plug in the processor, you know, it's a tiny little circle now. If I look at, you know, this is a port for um, a digital camera or something like that. Um, we have one for our audio, you know, HDMI can do all of those things. So I might just plug an HDMI cord in and it's, you know, gonna take my picture and my sound. So I didn't have to plug an audio in and a picture in. It's like when you were plugging in your VHR or VCR back in the day, remember you had to have like five different plugs and then next generation you only have to have three different plugs that's kind of what we're doing in the computer world right now too so just a quick look at all of these um, plugs in the back you know we have a lot of times the audio in and audio out so the sound in and sound out do have are color coded they tried to make it easier for users um, but they do have a lot of times like i said a little headphone symbol or a little microphone symbol. So if you were going to have a desktop and you were then going to add a, uh, like a an audio video camera, if you didn't have one, you know, like a webcam, you might use those ports. Um, the ethernet port, we're going to talk about this in a couple of minutes, but this is where the internet is coming into your computer. Super important when you're, um, if you don't have Wi-Fi. So, and it's also important when you do have Wi-Fi and you don't have strong Wi-Fi. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, lots of USB ports. So one thing that people are experiencing when they are getting new laptops, especially like really thin laptops, is they've taken some of these ports out because they're hoping that you're using more wireless things like Bluetooth. And we'll get to Bluetooth as well. Um, but they're taking some of them out because you're using signal that's going through the air instead of signal plugging into your computer. And Ray, jump in if I'm forgetting anything. No, you're doing great. Um, so the monitor port, there's like 30 different ways that different computers plug their monitor into the computer. Um, it's It could be a cable. It could be um, the HDMI cord, you know, an older computer is probably still going to have a cable. Um, a lot of times it's called a VGA port. Um, and I believe, let me find it here. That's the blue one. Little blue one. Um, it's kind of an oblong shape. It's a little wider at one end than it is at the other. 
um, nine pin is what Ned's telling me. <laughs> I never counted all the little holes. Um, to be quite honest, it's just a puzzle and you just kind of match the shapes and sizes until it plugs in um, when I do it. But I am gonna send you in our cheat sheet, this website that I'm on has a really cool activity where you can match the ports. So it helps you kind of see what the shapes are. Um, it's sort of like a Lego game sometimes I feel like, but it's important to have that. Um, and then down here, these are where you would have plugged in your mouse or any kind of other um, keyboards, that kind of thing. I remember my first computer that I took to school had the green and the purple that I plugged in and it helped me match my cords. Yeah, so the only thing I wanna say about this is that a long time ago when computers were first starting out, there was a possibility that you could plug in a cable to the wrong port and screw things up. It's really hard to do that anymore. Um, and so just, you know, take a look at the cables that you have to plug in, take a look at the ports, try to match them up as best you can, and uh, usually you're pretty good. Um, the last one I wanna notice is a parallel port. It's really big and it's old and we don't use it very much anymore. Um, but every once in a while you'll see something <clears throat> I know in Kaylee's office, she has a drawer full of these adapters from parallel ports because before we needed them. Yeah, I'm just going, going to go on record as saying that Ned at this point is, is probably saying to himself, if any of, any of you have a parallel port printer attached to a computer, he'll want to know so he can come over and personally throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just guessing. <laughs> Ned, you can let me know if I'm wrong. <laughs> so. I agree. <laughs> this is a pretty easy call. <laughs> okay, I'm going to switch back to, but I do want to show you. Um, so we're not going to do it right now, but on this website, you can scroll down and you can literally pick what kind of computer you have. And it lets you match, like, it'll help you see how these ports all go together. So I know it's not something that you have to do all the time but I know it is something that when I have to do it, it makes me a little anxious because it's not something I do very often. And so they really do have like you drag and drop it over there. So I would encourage you to try it out just to see um, so that we, you know, you can feel a little bit more comfortable with it. Let me get back to my PowerPoint. Do we have questions on ports before we talk about the next kind of port? Um, do, um, because both the new, uh, towers now, are they fading away from VGAs and just going with, um, I guess, uh, HDMI or, uh, audio plug-in, is it more simplified now, the towers? Yeah, every, um, every tower that I've seen still seems to have, um, the different, connector ports, like it'll, it'll have the VGA port and that for older monitors. Um, and then, you know, for a lot of, I mean, the, the big reason why you would still go with, with a tower computer, a, a desktop tower, is because you're trying to do something specialized. So like you might have a really high-end video card that allows you to do a bunch of different things. Um, and so like, like if you look at the video card that I have to do virtual reality, um, I've got five different video connectors just on that card. Um, and that lets you hook up different monitors and, and different things. It gets really complex. But, but, uh, um, but for the most part, yeah, I think when it comes especially to laptops and everything, they're trying to simplify things as much as they can. Anyway, the last the tower I got from my mom was a USB monitor. You just hooked it up USB. Really? Now that's a first. I've, I've not heard of a USB monitor before. So that's kind of interesting. Um, people who are into gaming a lot, like the VR or, you know, if you game on your computer, that's when um, they use a lot of those different kinds of adapters. Um, and that often they would use a tower. Or, or when they log simulator time and not gaming, but logging simulator time. I'm I joking. That's, that's what I tell my wife when I don't want to. <laughs> It's like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, so your dock. 
if you got a new laptop or if you have a laptop, often you have a dock that is associated with it. Now the laptop will run without it. Um, but if you think about on a laptop, we don't always have all of those ports that we just talked about. So if I have an old monitor, how do I plug that into my laptop if I don't have the right cord? You know, it doesn't match. And so a dock was another, is another way to extend that connection, extend those ports so that you can have those. Um, I have two pictures of docks here. These are just two Dell docks. Um, one is like the one dock I used to have and one's like the dock I have now, but they vary. My husband has HP and his dock looks a little bit different. His charging port even is a little different. Like we can't use each other's chargers, but it's still those same shapes. It's still gonna do the same thing. It just is located in a little bit different spot. Ray, do you have anything to add there? Um, actually, do you, do you want to unshare your screen for a second? Yes, please. Okay, so I just thought I'd show you another one. So this is one of those teeny little USB-C. Actually, let me do something here real quick. Okay. So this, this is the little USB-C port that we we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Really small, round. You can't plug it in the wrong way. You can plug it either way. So this is a little connector that I have for that little laptop that I was telling you about. So that thing plugs into this thing, which is a hub that has all those different ports. It has an HDMI port here for, for displays and then all sorts of different things I can plug in. So this one little USB port can drive any of those um, just by plugging it in. So I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd share that with you. And these are cheap, these, this is like 25 bucks. So. When we okay. presenters come to the auditorium at Pickerington, especially people who use um, a Mac, they moved away from some of those ports faster than some of the Windows-based companies. And so they often have to have one of those converters and all you're really doing is taking it from one way and switching it around and getting it to go the other. I always think of that line in um, Apollo 13 where he lays all that stuff on the table and he says, you have to figure out how to get a round peg in a square hole. And that's what that adapter is doing is it's just transferring it so that it can get into a different. And that's really what all those um, ports are doing is they're just figuring out how to get the information one from one place to another. But as technology evolves, we just keep adding more to the list. So the last thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about today um, with ports is our internet ports, um, because it might not be something that we always had to think about. And I apologize, this image is a little grainy as I made it bigger. Um, but Probably you're sitting at home right now and you're using your home Wi-Fi, which was probably perfectly fine when you just wanted to share pictures of um, silly cat videos. And then when you went to plug your computer in and try to do work for eight hours a day, you may have had some questions or how did this even get set up? Somebody set this up for me when they came and set my internet up. I don't know how to plug my computer into this or how to get started. Um, so I just wanted to kind of walk you through so I have to see the big picture. I have to see how everything is connected. And so, um, you know, the internet comes from the internet service provider into some kind of modem or router. A lot of them now are all one. So if you have, sometimes they'll call it a gateway. Um, sometimes they'll call it a router. Some, you know, different companies call it different things. When I was on AT&T, they called it a gateway. and Everything came into one box and then everything came out the way it was supposed to. Um, in our home now, we have a modem and then a router, so we have two separate. But somehow it has to come, and it usually is still through a coaxial cable, or it may be through an HDMI or something like that, but it's going to come from that internet service provider through the wall into that modem, and then the modem sending that information to the router, which is making it usable for your computer. A Wi-Fi router is making it usable over, you know, the air, so it's looking for a signal. 
Um, I live in Columbus and I can see, if I look at my Wi-Fi list, I can see my Wi-Fi and I can see seven other houses' Wi-Fi's. If you live in the country, you might be excited if you can see your own Wi-Fi. You know, so it kind of depends. It's just like your Wi-Fi on your, your cell phone. When you're close to the signal, it's stronger. So we had some folks when they moved remote that um, were struggling with getting connection on their computer. Couldn't figure out why they weren't get, being able to get on the VPN or they weren't having very good um, Wi-Fi signal. And so it seems silly, but even in our homes, a router still might not be super strong. So literally moving the computer, moving your body closer to the router can actually increase that. My brother has wireless um, cameras on his house, like as for surveillance outside. And he had to buy a router extender so that the router would be more powerful um, so that the camera could get the signal. So it seems silly, you know, in 2020 that we have to move closer to the router, but sometimes we just have to move better to a better signal. The other way to do that, even if you do have a Wi-Fi, is to actually still plug it in. Because if you think about it, a cord is always going to be more reliable than the Wi-Fi signal. Yeah, the other thing too, Ian, is that depending on your router and, and your other hardware, um, the sometimes the Wi-Fi signal can't handle as much data as the cable can. Now, modern modern routers aren't like that, but a lot of the routers we still have in our homes um, can only handle a fraction of the total uh, what's called bandwidth, the total speed that our that our routers can can put out. So if you're having trouble, like like when we're doing something like this with Zoom, if you find that your video signal is is halting and 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 every so often people freeze or you freeze when you're talking to somebody else, one of the things you can try to do is to connect your computer directly to that router if you're close enough, and that will more often than not increase your speed quite a bit. And that's going to use a cable that looks sort of like a phone line. It's a little bit thicker and it's a little bit of a bigger adapter and it's called an ethernet cord. So if you ever hear somebody reference that, that's the cord that's going from the router to the modem. It's also the cord that's gonna go from the router to your computer. And once again, it's the only one that fits in the back of the, you know, it's the only hole that's on there. So you're not gonna break it. I remember when I had my very, my lap, my desktop that had an ethernet cord and we still had dial up. So it used to have a phone cord on the back too. So as you know, we just keep evolving and keep changing. The nice thing is that a lot of times they are leaving some of these older ports on there so that we don't have to buy all new equipment every single time. It could get pretty expensive all the time. But that's kind of where we're going to stop today. It's a lot of information if you don't know all those ports. And like I said, it's not, this is not something that you have to know every single day. But I know that um, recently we've had to learn it a little bit because we had to figure out why my Wi-Fi wasn't very strong or I had to take a desktop lap computer home or play with a laptop that I've never been on before because of the um, remote working. So we wanted to kind of put this in the forefront because it's an easy place to start. I will Ellen. tell you that if you buy a new computer, they give you very little in the way of instructions. They usually just give you one picture that says plug here and plug here and go. But if you look online, there's usually a lot more details. So even if you just look, you know, I got a Dell and it says Inspiron 200 on it. If you looked up user manual for Dell Inspiron 200, you'd be able to find that. And sometimes it's easier to read because it doesn't come in nine different languages. You know, like my IKEA directions where I have to turn it upside down and it's in German the other way. You know, um, but there's definitely resources out there. They just don't always take the time to um, print it and give it to us anymore. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you all. You've been sitting here listening to me jabber for 54 minutes. What kinds of questions do you have still or that we didn't cover that we can real quick while we're here? I understand it more, so thank you. I mean, it's just been, you know, 
you see it, but you don't understand it. So yeah. made it clear. Yes. Thank you. Well, and so what we're trying to do too, Kelly, is is just kind of start with a base uh, and just kind of keep moving on up and 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 um, you know really just trying to make sure we cover everything that goes along because yeah. You know, yeah, like like Anne was saying, there's no real easy way to get this stuff anymore, and so we just want to make sure that everybody had a chance to hear it. I have a question. Why, when you're at work and you sign in using a different computer and you use your you know, your login stuff. Why does the um, the icons, you know, like sometimes you might have all of the programs that you normally have? Yeah, so, so that's tapping into something called a profile. So each of us have our own profile um, that's stored not only on your computer, but also on servers. And so when you go to another computer, it'll try to load up that profile and, and get it to work. There are... Um, ours is a little bit of a weird system because um, there, there are some companies that just run computers that are nothing more than a terminal that goes into, that, that displays stuff from a server. So it's kind of like a dumb unit that you, that you have and you just kind of type it in. Um, whereas we have active computers on everybody's desk as well as having those profiles stored on the server. So that's why like when you go from computer to computer, first off, it takes you some time to load up that profile, right? Because it's downloading it from a server onto that computer. Uh, and then the other th thing is that some of our uh, software is loaded on your specific computer. And so when you go to another computer, it might not be loaded on that one. So it's kind of like a hybrid design that way. Um, good in that it's usually faster and, it, and, and you've got some more alternatives. Bad in that you can't just sit down at one terminal and have it perfectly come up on, on another. You know, so, so it's, um, yeah, so those things are kind of interesting that way. Mm -hmm. I can give you an example, Marie. Staff Training Manager is a program that I use that's on my computer. So I have the app, but if I logged onto your computer, it's only saved on my local drive so it wouldn't mm -hmm. be worse and so, so then, then there would be with my icons because it's going to be gone so then something else is going to move up and i'm like wait where is it oh where is it going? where to go yeah so then there are there some that all of us have that are universal you know so that, you know i can get on any computer and access you know like gatekeeper or i can get on any computer and access the internet and not have a problem with, you know, um, IS, for instance. Um, yeah, yeah, most of the stuff that you do, Marie, would, would mm -hmm. be universal on most of our computers, the vast majority of our computers. Um, and as we move more and more to the cloud, um, that's going to be even more like that. So, like, for instance, we've moved from having Microsoft Office, so Windows, Excel, Win, um, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all those things used to be installed on our computers. Now that's all in the cloud. That's Office 365, it's, it's up in the cloud. So it's more universal. Um, Imagine is a cloud-based solution, right? And now Gatekeeper Anywhere that we're getting ready to launch probably next week mm -hmm. it is also gonna be a cloud-based solution where you can use it anywhere pretty much on anything. You don't, uh, with, with, with Gatekeeper Anywhere, you don't even have to be on a computer at all. You can be on a tablet or even your phone mm -hmm. and you can dictate your notes into your phone and it'll write the note for you. Now that's exciting. Isn't that cool? I'll try that. You just yeah. have to prove yeah. it. So, Sometimes so, that dictation is a little questionable. So that's just, that's just a little, that's just a little teaser there, but, but yeah, so that's, that's what we're trying to go to and, and, um, you know, yeah, the, that that'll be really cool once it once it's up and running. Yeah, to get off of there. But for Gatekeeper Anywhere, you know, if I had a short of Gatekeeper Anywhere saved on my desktop, it might not show up on somebody else's desktop. Oh, okay. Just I can still access up. it, but I'm probably going to have to go to the web to get to it. Okay. I have a silly question. My camera is on my lower point of my laptop, so I'm always looking sideways. 
um, my daughter Sarah, her computer is set up that way too, and she really does not think it's very flattering. No, it isn't. So, <laughs> so, so she she has requested that the next machine have a very high mounted camera. <laughs> I agree with her. I hate it. <laughs> when I FaceTime, I have to like go like this, like no, I can't on my neck. And <laughs> um, I will tell you though, when I am at my desk. I usually use my monitor as my main screen, but my monitor does not have the camera. And so right. when I'm on a video call, I purposely unplug it so that I have to be looking at the place where it is. Or I'm like looking over here the whole time because you're over here, but you're seeing me from over there. So right. that's just something that I personally do just so that it looks a little more normal. Okay, I'll have to try that because yeah, I'm always looking sideways like this. So, so now just as a, um, just to kind of reinforce some of the stuff we've gone over today. So one of your, the solutions here, if you wanted to, if that really, really bothered you, is that you can buy something called a USB camera. You can plug it into your, your, your USB port, put it wherever it's most flattering for you to have it. In my case, about a half mile away down the road. And, <laughs> and um, but then from Zoom, you would just select that as the camera that you want to use. And, and, and that's, that's all it would take. Thank you. I think I might use that. <laughs> oh, I have to go. Thank you for yep. the information. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank okay. you. We'll, 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 we'll tell you what we're going to do next week here in just a little while. So thanks for coming today. Thank you. My Thank phone you. died. That's why I'm on Pammy's now. That's okay. <laughs> as long as you have the charger with the charging port to plug it back in. You <laughs> there Thank you. you. We'll see you next thanks, week. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Thank Bye. you. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Hey, so James, are you still on? I, I can see you're still there.